Hi everyone, this is Izzy at Whenever. Thanks for joining me today. We've got a fun video lined up for you today. We're going to be looking at how to use our body block for our bodice body block and how to add our seam allowances so that we can cut out our very first twirl. We're going to look at how to cut and sew that really nicely and accurately in today's video. Now, as always with these videos, you're going to need your standard pattern drafting toolkit, which is listed here in front of you. I am not expecting this first draft to fit you absolutely perfectly first time round. What I'm expecting is that it's going to sort of generally fit you quite nicely, but then we're going to need to do some tweaking and some changing because every single body is different and our body block was based on your measurements, but then it's also based on standard formulas as well. So there's definitely going to be some tweaking that we're going to need to do. However, in this video, we're just going to show you how to add your seam allowances to your body block, how to cut it out, and then how to sew it really nicely and accurately. So just enjoy the process, take your time. It is not a complicated sew, but we do want to be as accurate as possible so that we can transfer any fitting adjustments to our block and get that as nice and neat as possible. We're now going to draw up our pattern pieces using the block that we've done. Now let's not forget that the block is just fitting our body shape exactly and it has no allowance for seam allowance. <laughs> so what we need to do now is just to add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to every area where the front is going to attach to the back. So let's do that together one step at a time. So start off by placing a piece of tracing paper over your block so that you don't affect your block um, in any way. We don't want to change the block, we just want to use it as a base to then create our pattern pieces. Now, because we're just going to be checking the fit and we're not looking at attaching this to anything else, it's just a technical exercise, we don't need to add a seam allowance down to the waist or to the neck or to the sleeves because we're not actually going to be attaching that to anything else. We're just gonna check that everything's sitting in the right place. For this block, we're going to add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to the side seam of the back bodice. We're gonna start with the back bodice. And the reason why we're adding 1.5 is because this side seam of our back bodice needs to attach onto the front bodice. So let's add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And don't forget that your ruler has a red dotted line here that represents the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So you can line up the red dotted line with the line on your drawing and just extend that, perfect. Now on this block, we have not got a sleeve, so you can just trace around the sleeve. I'm not going to add any seam allowance to that. However, our shoulder up at the top is going to attach onto the shoulder of the front bodice. So don't forget that we've got two kind of separate little lines here because we've got the dart in the middle. So draw those two separately. And then just extend that dart up to the top of your new seam allowance. At this point, just to aid with your pattern drafting, you may just want to add a line that goes up the middle of the dart at this point so that you can then just continue those lines across like that. Perfect. Our neckline is not going to attach to anything, so we're just going to draw a nice curved line along that point there. Now, we need to be able to get into the top when we actually put it on. So we need to create an opening at the back of the top. What we'll effectively do is imagine that there is a zip going up our center back effectively. And when you try on the twirl for the first time, you just need someone to help you pin it in place at the back. If we only have an opening at the side seam here, we won't be able to get the, um, the twirl over our head if we've sewn up all the seams around. I know that from experience. <laughs> so add your 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to your center back. We're going to cut two of the back pattern pieces. Just extend your neckline along to your new center back line. Our waist is not attaching to anything else. So just draw your waist exactly as it is. And then draw in your dart. Don't forget that you're gonna be using a nice sharp pencil as you're doing all of this. We're just using a fat marker pen for the sake of the video. 
square off any sort of seam allowances that need to be neatened up and tidied up. And there you have it. The only thing left to do is just to label our pattern piece, back bodice, cut to, and we'll say first 12. Our grain line is going to run parallel with our centre back. So add an annotation that says grain line. Now for these pattern pieces, we've got quite a lot of seams that are being attached together. Some of them are a little bit complex in terms of the darts and the curves that we've got going on. So in order to guarantee a little bit more accuracy, I would recommend just marking on your pattern, maybe with like a little dashed line, your stitch line for this particular block, because we do want to try and get this as nicely fitted as we can. And this stitch line on your uh, pattern piece is just going to act as a really nice reference when you're sewing everything together, just to make sure that you're definitely sewing along the lines that you want to be sewing along. <laughs> and you could just annotate that um, if you wanted to and just say stitch line. And we'll do the same for the center back. This stitch line is actually really helpful to see because um, I imagine someone else is going to be pinning you in at the back so then they can just really clearly see which um, parts of the back bodice to line up as they pin it on you. Excellent, once you've done that, we can then move on to the front bodice. I'm gonna shift my tracing paper just across so that I can do that now nice and easily. To start off with, just draw a nice straight line right down the centre front. We're going to be placing this pattern on the fold. Uh, so we'll place it on the fold down the centre front. So no seam allowance to the centre front, please. Once again, no seam allowance to the waist. So just trace over your block exactly as it is and carefully draw in your dart. Add your 1.5 centimetre seam allowance to your side seam, but trace over the arm side. Your shoulder seam will need to attach onto the back bodice shoulder. So just draw that in place with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance, and then just draw in the dart. And then draw in your neckline because there's no seam allowance there either. Now at this point here, we've got a big dart, which is going to be um, sewn together. And this is then going to attach to this bit over here. So we don't really need the seam allowance to extend any further than where this dart is, do we? So just continue that dart up to that seam allowance at that point. When we sew this together, this bit and this bit are going to be attached together. So really, we don't actually really need to cut any extra fabric up here, we can literally just do it like this. Next, we're going to annotate our pattern piece. Start off by drawing a line down the um, center front and just annotating it to say, place on fold. Next, add your grain line, which is also going to run parallel with the center front line. Label the pattern piece, front to bodice, cut one on fold, first 12. Do you may as well just add in your stitch lines with a little dashed line onto your block so that you've got that as a nice little reference. Perfect. Once you've done all of that, you just cut out your two pattern pieces using a pair of paper scissors. Okay, next off, we're going to need to get our calico fabric out and we're going to want to place the pattern onto the calico fabric. Now, my calico is um, doubled over, folded over, so we've got two layers of fabric. We've made sure that the fold is exactly equidistant at either end of the fabric. So at this point, the uh, selvage is 33 centimeters from the edge, at the folded edge, 
and over here again is exactly 33 centimeters from the folded edge. What that means is that the fabric is folded exactly along the grain line. Now it's really important that we cut our fabric along the grain line with the grain line in the same direction as what we've um, said it needs to be on our pattern piece. And the reason for that is that the grain line really affects how a garment hangs on our body. So if we accidentally place the pattern kind of skew it like that, bearing in mind our grain line is running straight down the fabric at this point, the garment is going to hang a little bit strangely, a little bit oddly on us. And so we're not really going to be able to tell accurately what the fit should look like. So make sure that you do spend a bit of time just placing your fabric nice and neatly, making sure that you've got a nice even fold across the fabric. And then I want you just to place your pattern piece on top of the fabric, it doesn't matter if it's right side or wrong side facing up at this point, and just pop a few pins in place. Now I always recommend pinning it in place as close to the edge of the pattern piece as you can. Now the reason for this is so that when you're cutting it um, or using your rotary blade to trim it, um, you've got the pattern is not going to move at all. <laughs> on the fabric. When you're saying something quite detailed, as we're doing today, and we're really looking at the fit and just getting that as accurate as we can, any little minuscule bits of um, movement will affect the fit because we're working to the millimeter. Next, grab your rotary blade or your scissors and just cut your pattern piece out. Repeat that process of cutting and pinning out your front piece as well. Next, we're going to use our carbon paper and our tracing wheel to transfer the line markings of our pattern piece onto the fabric. So grab your carbon paper with the colour side of it facing up and then pop your whole, all of your pattern that you've pinned together on top of your carbon paper just like that. Next, I want you to grab your tracing wheel and holding everything down nice and firm, just trace over the dart. I like to just draw a little line at the top of my dart just so I can really clearly see where the dart line finishes. Next, do the same for the top shoulder dart. Transfer that dart line marking up there. Now the other line markings we've, we have on this pattern piece are our stitch lines. So once again, it is gonna be really useful for you just to trace over those stitch lines across the shoulder and the side seam and also on this piece, the centre back. So as you can see at this point now, our line markings have been transferred and you can see a nice little red dashed dotted line which is exactly where our dart is on our pattern piece. We've also got the side seam showing up really nicely there. And at the top, we've also got our dart at the top with our side seam allowance at that point and there. However, it's currently only on one side of um, the fabric and we've only got it on one piece of the fabric. So we now need to transfer it to the other side. At this point, just take out the number of pins you need to be able to then put the carbon paper face down between your pattern piece and your fabric. So if you just sort of pop that into there like that, you can then just use your tracing wheel to trace over those darts again. And this will then transfer the dart line markings on to your other fabric back piece. Let's do the dart and then the side seam. And just the dart at the top of the shoulder along with the seam allowance. Okay, so that's excellent. What we've managed to do now is we've got a really nice pattern piece here. We've then transferred all of the line markings onto one side of our fabric and also onto the other side. So we've now got some really nice, clear and easy to understand fabric pieces which we're going to sew together. Before you can do that though, you just need to repeat that whole process of transferring the line markings uh, onto your front bodice piece. 
Okay, working on the back pattern piece, I'm just going to demonstrate to you uh, the technique of how to um, pin and sew a dart really nicely and accurately. Once I've shown you this one, you can then go and repeat that process seven other times for the other darts across the whole pattern piece. With the wrong side of the fabric facing up, I want you just to pinch together the two ends of the dart and also the top of the dart up here. Fold that over. Next, grab a pin and down at the bottom near the waistline, pop your pin directly along the dotted line so it's running absolutely through the dotted line at that point and so it's facing towards the waist. Flip it over and check that the pin is aligning with the dotted line on this side. It's not quite at that point. So I'm just going to shift my fabric along marginally and repin that in place. And now that's looking really good. Repeat that process along the rest of the dart, just popping a few little pins in place and then just checking that it's aligning on both sides really nicely. And then pop a pin up at the top of the dart so you know exactly where you're sewing to when you finish sewing. Let's just take a little closer look at that detail. So you can see that the pins are all sitting really nicely in line with the dotted line of where the dart is. And if we turn the fabric over, on the other side, the pins are just sitting beautifully in line with the dart line. So when we sew using the dotted line as our guide and as our reference, we know that we're going to be sewing exactly through the dart line, so it's going to be super accurate. And then up at the top, we've just got a little pin at the top, so we know that when we hit there, that's the end of our dart. Now, what I am going to recommend is that you start at the waist and you sew up towards the point. When you start at the waist, reinforce the stitch line using your standard method and then continue to sew using a standard stitch length throughout the majority of the dart. When you get to about two inches um, below the point of the dart, you can then start to reduce the stitch length gradually so that by the time you hit the point, your stitch length is a nice narrow stitch of about 1.6. What that does is it just allows the dart just to gradually grade in to the point and we get a really nice sharp point. When you hit the point up here, I do not want you to reinforce the stitches at that point. I just want you to sew off the fabric and then we'll tie a knot. The reason why we do that and why we don't uh, reinforce the stitch at the top is simply that we want to make sure that it's as smooth as possible as it sits on our body. So if the dart um, is reinforced, it just adds a bit more bulk to the garment and we don't want that. We want it just to look really smooth and really beautiful. So that's what we're gonna do. So go grab your sewing machines and let's sew it up together. Now for the purpose of this demo, I'm using contrasting thread um, as always with these tutorials, just so that you can see at home exactly where I've stitched. But you may well want to use a matching thread to your fabric. So we're gonna start off at the waistline and then just sew up the dart. Take this really nice and slowly, there's no need to rush. Start to reduce your stitch length. Once you've sewn your dart, just tie two or three knots at the top of your dart, just to finish off those threads nicely, and then just carefully snip them. Brilliant. Now that we've done one dart, we then need to repeat the whole process with all of the other darts. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to iron the darts. This is a really uh, important part of our uh, twirl making process, so please don't skip this. I know a lot of people hate to iron. <laughs> what I would recommend is that you go and grab a tailor's ham if you've got one. If you've not got one, then just wrap up some uh, towels into a nice, neat, tight roll about this sort of size. Then I want you to pop the tailor's ham underneath your twirl where your dart is. We're going to make sure the point is just sitting over the curve of the tailor's ham at that point. Grab your iron and then press the dart towards the side seam. We're going to press all of our darts towards the side seam. And as you get to the top, just let the iron just sort of roll over the point. Lovely. Repeat that process for the top shoulder. We're going to press it 
towards the side seam. Repeat that process for all of your pattern pieces, making sure to press those, those darts towards the side seams every time. Okay, the final thing we need to do is just sew the shoulder seams together and the side seams together of our garment, leaving the center back open. So put the right side of your front facing up and then go grab one of your back pieces and pop it with the right side facing down so the right sides are together. Make sure that your center back is there and your side seam is just going to line up really nicely. Now, as we did before with the darts, we're going to pin really nicely and carefully to make sure that those uh, dotted lines we marked on our seam allowance are aligning really nicely along the pattern piece. Now, depending on how accurately you have cut out your pattern piece, you may have a little bit of discrepancy um, off your side of the width of your um, seam allowance. And that's exactly why we do this whole thing of putting little dots here, of transferring those lines using our carbon paper, just so that we can make sure that as we sew it, it is as accurate as it needs to be. Do the side seam and then the shoulder seam. Make sure that your dart is being pressed towards the side seam as you pin your shoulder seam in place. And once you've pinned one half on of your back, grab the other one and just repeat that whole process of really carefully pinning it in place. Beautiful. So once you've got those four seams pinned together, we're then just going to sew them in place following our lovely carbon paper dotted line. As you're stitching this, you can of course reinforce the stitch line at the beginning and at the end. We want these lines to be really nice and firm so that when we try it on, um, we can just really see nice and clearly if it's fitting well. We don't want any of the seams to start coming loose as we fit it because obviously that will affect the fit. The final thing for us to do is just to press all of those seam allowances open. Now you may find it helpful just to use a tailor's ham so that you can just easily iron those seams in place. And just iron all four of those seams open. Excellent. So there we have it. Your first twirl of your bodice should look something like this with a nice open back at the back so you can pin it in place. You've got your nice little dotted red lines of your carbon paper at the back so that you can pin those together really nicely as you try it on. So there we go. In next week's episode, we are going to be looking at how to then fit your toile and make the necessary changes so that it's gonna fit your body better. We are not expecting it to fit perfectly at this point because we've just used quite a lot of generic maths calculations. So what we're going to do next is look at refining the fit. And I'm fully expecting that everybody will have some tweaks and changes they're going to need to make to their block. So tune in for that next week. Um, but for now, you've finished this episode. So thank you for joining me. I have really enjoyed the process of talking you through how to sew your first toile up nice and neatly and accurately. I hope you've really enjoyed that slow process um, and have had loads of fun with it today. I can't wait to see what everyone's um, toiles are looking like. So please do post any of your um, makes and creations, your journey of this sort of pattern drafting journey on our Minerva website or um, on social media and do tag us here at Minerva. We'd love to see what you're creating. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you next time. Bye.